All right. Hello, everybody. It is May 12th, 2016. My name is Zetrot, and we're here today with another OS Talk. And I'm joined with Kiyanko today as Deadbeat is out. He had a little something to get to this weekend, so we will see him next week, hopefully. How are you doing, Kiyanko? It is Thursday, my characters. It oh, is wait, no. Thursday. No, it's Friday. No, that'd be Friday. I forget what Thursdays is. Or is it Thursday my acquaintances? Whichever, whichever one the Thursday frog is. Yes. Um, so basically what we're going to do here today is we've tried in the past to get a mania discussion going and it didn't work for us. So we're just going to do an open question thing today. Now I do have a lot of cool stuff that I can go over about the community and some of the new things. And hopefully we'll have some of our listeners in today. Go ahead and chime in with their questions and have a little bit of a conversation going on. So we're going to go ahead and open this right into Q&A as we don't have an interview topic today. We're just going to do questions only. So with that being said, if you have a question that you'd like to speak out loud and you'd like to have that broadcasted, go ahead and just um, give us a notification in the chat there and we will get right on to that. Tell us, ask us what you want to know. Very much so. Within limits. Yes, of course, you know, keep it safe for work. And um, as long as you can answer it on a TV without getting a rating of PG, you should be good. So do we have any questions right off the bat here? Oh, look, we do have a couple last minute people as well. So maybe they will be interested. Um, so who is going to be our first question here? All right. It looks like Baka is going to be there. Are you going to do you want Baka, would you like voice? Do you want voice or are you going to just um put that out there in text? Yes to which one? Yeah, we we, we kind of need to know which one. Yes. Voice. Okay. All right. Throw him up there with voice and let him ask that and um remember to stay quiet on that side cuz he does have a little bit of feedback. Hello Baka. Uh, I just wanted to ask, when will the next standard championship be on? Okay, so you're asking about uh, the standard OS World Cup? Yes. All right, we have a rotation of cups, so it's a little bit easier to know when every World Cup goes. Um, as of right now, it goes the t um, Tyco World Cup, Catch the Beat, Mania 7 Key, then OS World Cup, then Mania 4 Key, then Tyco. So. Um, with the Catch Cup coming up right now, usually it takes about a month and a half to complete, if not longer, usually about three months. It's usually every quarter we switch. So if we're at Catch the Beat, I do believe we have one more. We have a Mania Tournament and then the World Cup. So if we're looking at the month of May now, the OS the next, World Cup. The next OS World Cup, I think, is going to be in October. Mm -hmm. Like around the beginning of October, I think. Okay, sign up should be around October yeah and do remember that if you are interested in taking part in the OS World Cup you do have to have a minimum play skill level they do have it capped out for each World Cup it's a little bit different just make sure that you are high enough rank in your country and high enough globally as well to be admitted I think it's you have to be under 10k in standard I know for some of the extra game modes it's under 5k for the smaller communities but either which way, as long as you fill that in and you sign up on the roster, if the team decides to add you, you should be fine. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. Thank you for the question. Okay. Um, moving forward, do we have anyone else with a question? If not, I can go into a little bit of something while we wait for our next question. Right Just after Baca said they wanted to ask one uh uh, Backfire said he wanted to ask a question. Oh, Backfire actually has a question? Okay, we'll would go you ahead. Like, would you like voice or text? Um, okay, so we're literally just talking about Backfire for you just getting in here. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, we're just talking about upcoming events, any kind of questions. It's free open game today. Um, we tried to set up a Mania discussion. It kind of bombed on us. We're going to try to do it again at a later time. And hopefully we get something with that and we actually have an interviewee so we can write up questions. But feel free to ask anything you want, be it text or ch uh, voice. We're 
doing good. We're doing good. I'm actually doing quite all right. It's a little bit weird running this without Deadbeat, but it's okay. I have uh, Winter with me today, so that's totally fine. And it looks like we have a Wan as well. Wan Crystal entered the building. Backfire says he needs a moment, so should we? And then, but Fearum has one, so should we? Yeah, let's go ahead. Fearum and now then. We'll run Fearum, and okay. then we'll just get back to Backfire. Fearum, okay. Fearum wants voice. Hello, Fearum. Hello. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. So my question is. We talked right now about World Cups. Um, my question is, uh, the other key modes in Mania get more and more popular, and the question is, uh, is, pl is it planned to make uh, World Cups for the other key modes too, like 5 key, 6 key, or, uh, or uh, 8 key? Um, well, that's actually a really good question there, Fiverr. Um Now, we've actually thought about doing this, but as you said, they're slowly getting more and more popular each day. And one of the main things that we want to make sure going into any type of World Cup is that we have enough standalone creations for that key mode. And we're not using too many converts because, you know, as anybody knows, converts, the only game mode that really handles converts well is Oast Catch. So that being said, like, I feel like once the mapping content is there, we might see something, but I think to start it off, it might be how we did four and seven key to begin with. I think they'll probably run concurrently at the same time. Like say we have a five and a six key tournament, they'll probably run at the exact same time. Um, I don't know how streaming will go with it, but as they get more popular, I definitely feel like we'll try to fit them in somewhere. Oh, that would be really cool. But the, the main the main reason why we don't see uh, Osmania World Cup 6 key and 5 key right now is content is a little bit on the lower side. And um, with that being there, we don't want to just fill it full of converts and it's just going to feel cheesy. And we and want it to be and more Mania official. And Mania is still the newest game mode. Yeah. Even though, it's, even though it's getting older now, it has a lot less time under its belt for, for mode specific maps and stuff like Taiko and, and Catch do. Yeah, that's true, we have don't enough maps for these game modes, that's true. Alright, thank, thank you. Alright, th thank you. And uh, it looks like we've got um, Backfire's question. I'm going to go ahead and have to like enlarge my screen so I can read the whole thing. So, Backfire asks, So the tournaments have kind of been vanilla ever since it came out. By vanilla, I mean they've just had 3v3, 4v4 score modes. Has the staff ever considered doing different score systems using a different format, such as Last Man's standing as well would they consider doing more elaborate pools to expand the hidden hard rocker flashlight for certain modes it seems like we have gone on and we have let tournaments stay the same does the staff have any plans to evolve beyond that that's a pretty good question um when it comes to tournament gameplay i know that there's a few official things and a few changed up uh scoring metrics that we do want to have we've always really talked about uh, trying to set up like an OS World Cup Junior Division, which would uh, basically scale in certain players from a certain uh, score bracket. I feel like that would be a little bit more exciting to watch as it's really anyone's game when you get into lower rankings there. Um, as for different type of scoring metrics, um, obviously you do see that we're making changes to like scoring mechanics for each game mode using score v2, stuff like that. Um, another really cool thing that uh, we're working on is a way to actively see the battle between score for two teams, um, like kind of like a pulse bar of some sort. Um, I don't want to go too much into the ideas for that because a lot of it's still up in the air. Nothing's 100% planned, but definitely different types of World Cups with different stipulations and rules is something we kind of want to work on. We've seen stuff like the Last Man Standing Cup and the recently new Dual Cup that seem to be doing well on their own. So, like, we don't want to just take from their ideas, but at the same time, we do want to try to improve the tournament environment and make sure that we are bringing something new every year. 
I mean, we just started adding the prize pools, so things will slowly start to change on that front, I do believe. I think it would be nice to see like the like the other like the other kinds of tournaments, but maybe not as on maybe not as on much of a large scale as like the main world cups are. But then again, yeah. it's like over time, maybe they will build up to be larger. I'd like to see one-on-one -on -one tournaments as well at, at some point. I really like watching one-on-ones. Yeah, and I feel like. Um, that's something that we could do, but I really want to see the Junior Cup because I feel like there's a lot of people that want to play in a tournament atmosphere, but they're just capped out due to the fact that with the World Cups, we want like, you know, the best of the best. And there's only such a limited amount of people that can participate for a country, even if, yeah. even if, so it, so then that gives, and so then that still gives an opportunity to people that aren't as super high rank, but they can still have the fun of competing in something. Yeah. But I hope that answers your question there, Backfire, a little bit on that, and hopefully we'll see some evolution to it. I do believe um, some things are in the works, and like I said, things like the Junior World Cup have been on our minds, and we've been wanting to do it, but the resources and the manpower and the time, like... A lot of people, I, I, and we say this every World Cup, and we just kind of want people to realize, is group stage is literal hell. It, it's not fun for anyone running that. Round of 16, that's a good time. Semis, quarter semis, and grand finals, they're full hype. But the group stage, even if we sound like we're having a great time, we're not. I mean, that's like, it's the amount of time you have to be up, uh, like if somebody has to call off, everything like that, it can get really crazy and hectic. I mean, I, I get calls at 2 in the morning sometimes to be there to cast and um, you know things get ridiculous it is pretty crazy okay that being said um, I do believe we can move on to the next question um, who do we have for the next one I do believe they said they wanted to use voice as well the next person was uh, was a uh, Rach Nuru and they said they want to use voice all right let's go ahead and get them up on here then you may now speak. For the uh, OS as a game, specifically the editor, we know mm -hmm. that the um, Tycho, no wait, uh, Mania has a specific graphic that displays when you're mm -hmm. editing the level. Do you think they're going to add a one for Tycho and catch the beats? Tycho, as it stands right now, is actually a solid editor in the sense. I feel like, yeah, graphically, we could probably update it to make it look a little bit more official, which is something not so much as a w w will we do it, it's a when will we do it. And with Catch the Beat, the main problem as to why we don't have a Catch the Beat editor is right now, and this is going to be a little bit technical, so I understand if you don't get it and if you need me to delve into it a little bit deeper, I can try. Um, the reason why Catch the Beat doesn't have an editor right now is the way that sliders are handled in Catch the Beat is the only points that are actually tracked is the start point and the end point. The slider body in the center actually randomizes to a degree and it shouldn't anymore it should definitely follow a set path and it does to an extent but there's no way to actually see how that's going to play out right now because getting the animation to play in real time is the coding feat that we're trying to get past at this moment so once that is available to do then catch the beat will work and we thought about you know doing a quick simple fix where we don't show the sliders, but we uh, show the fruit falling so you have an idea. But without the sliders, that's like the main thing that's like, um, that's like the main thing that people need to be able to see so they know if the slider movement is going to be an okay movement to get to the next fruit. You know, um, and in terms of Mania, the editor on that's going to get fine-tuned as well. Uh, the OS Next build of the editor is a huge overhaul from the previous editor as well. You'll also be able to see things. Um, we'll start to see more modding. Um, 
as you can see right now, modding on intensity is something that kind of does happen. Like people will be like, well, this part's not that intense. And um, a way to fix that is, I know if you've checked the development blog and you've seen um, some of Flight's drafts, you can actually see that uh, there is a wave editor built into the OS editor. So you'll be able to see the wave format as well. So that will actually help with intensity mods. Like if somebody's like, it's not too intense here, well, you'll have the wave format there so you can see how far the DBs go, how high the intensity is, and that will also help as well. Great, thanks. Not a problem. Okay, and a tiny question here from uh, Wisdom. They were asking, when will the new site replace the old one? Because the new site looks so good. I agree with you, Wisdom. The new site does look so good. Looks really and nice. And the best part about it is it's a lot closer than you might think to being uh, replaced. There's only a few things that are missing on the administration side before we could do the full, whole server side swap. But once all that stuff is set into motion, we should be seeing the new site being the complete replacement to the old one. I feel like that's definitely going to be a before the end of the year thing. New site hype. Yes, indeed. Um, the new site will overtake the old one pretty soon. It's just there's a few things like, as you can see, some of the new achievement packs and stuff like that, they are not being released for the old site anymore. They're only coming out to the new one as we are slowly getting ready to wave off our old PBBH5 board. It served us long and for nine years it kept OS running strong, but now it is time to wave it goodbye. Our, our early 2000s style form. Yeah, and um, we will be seeing the new site taking over soon. And I mean, I, I'm super excited about that. It looks fantastic. It runs really well as well. So we don't really have to worry about it being too demanding. I do know that it does lag uh, some people with easier machines on some of our mappers that have over 100 ranked maps. If you go to their <laughs> board, it gets a little bit slow. It's a. It's also a bit laggy on mobile, but then again, you're running it on mobile, and it's probably having a hard time loading. Like loading, like your like if I were to go and load all of your maps. Yeah. But that being said, that should happen. So, do we have any other questions here that we would like to um uh, have vocal? I know Juan said he Kevin had, had a question. Text question. And Kevin has a text question. Yeah, oh, right. He, it was a few. It was about ten minutes ago. And oh. Kevin says, "By the way, how did the name change of CTB come into existence? It seemed there was no sign of having it reconsidered, and it was just boop, Os Catch World Cup. And I'm like, what's Os Catch? Okay. Um, <laughs> this one's actually a little bit easier, and it's a little more minute than you might think. But um, our acronym for the Os Catch the Beat World Cup is CWC, but um, Pepe made it very clear one day that CWC should like, but there's CTB, so he's like, so the CTB WC is what it should look like, and that looks horrible, so he's like, I'm gonna just name it Catch. That's literally why it got changed. It, it was an ugly looking acronym, so they changed it to make it look like a pretty acronym. That's a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's super simple. I mean, it doesn't really change too much either. I mean, it's just instead of Os Catch the Beat, it's Os Catch. Yeah. You so, catch. Yeah, that is what changed that, unfortunately there, Kevin. It was just like, like all the acronyms for all of it, I think, was on his calendar. And he's like, God, this looks gross. He's like, let's get that fixed. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. That's just my educated guess based off, like, some stuff I've seen Peppy do in the past. Interpretations might, from the lore. Yeah, that might be, that might be an actual, there might be an actual more valid reason behind the change, but... I haven't, there was no discussion over the change, there was no talk of the change, 
So I feel like the change was legit either to make the acronym look better or to make like the banners or something look more reasonable because I mean I could totally understand. I'm going to use chat real quick. That's how it's abbreviated everywhere. And like for anybody that's OCD that would drive them nuts. Like see look Kevin you even capitalized it but unfortunately nobody capitalizes it like that. So I, I feel like they were probably like, O's catch looks better, let's use that. It's not going to make anybody mad, it's still basically the same name, they just removed the beat. Oh god, I hope not. OWC has to be changed OSTD to OSTWC. Oh man. How about no? Original oh, sound. Never original soundtrack. Don't worry. <laughs> cup. Yeah, original soundtrack. Don't worry, cup. That's my favorite <laughs> World Cup. In this World Cup, we only play original soundtracks. Okay. Anyways, though. Um. That being said, thank you so much for that question. I do believe we have one with the next one. And I know Juan's gonna want voice. Of the one! And his oh. name is Juan Cena! <laughs> you didn't need, I, I mean, I didn't need that introduction, but hey, thanks for that. How are you doing, guys? Doing good, doing good. Glad to be running a talk again. Oh yeah, it, it, it has been a long time. But... It's been three months. Three months, man. <laughs> and wasn't months the last, it, it wasn't the last talk supposed to be like, hey, the talks are coming back? Yeah. yeah, but then we also we also did release a video that said that like we were going to try to move them away from the hour format, which I do believe we're kind of screwing that up here. But oh well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Sorry, we <laughs> Let's lied. Just not talk about that. Let's just focus now on this one. Yes. So my question, I'm not sure if someone asked about this before mm -hmm. because I joined like recently. But I wanted to ask about a tournament scene, about the, the Mania World Cups having only three mods bracket. Uh, I always thought that it should be double time and hard rock, and I'm not sure if some of you have considered that before or not. I, I feel like the only reason why we haven't used double time and hard rock is that because there's no actual adjustment to the score, um, there's no real um, uh, benefit to running those. Now, if we do like a double time bracket itself, I feel like that's viable, but anything where you'd be able to combine mods, it, it, it has no score advantage. Yeah, but Hard Rock and Double Time are technically the only ones that do change the difficulty of the game like if you're used to play hidden or flashlight it doesn't really matter but if you use double time or hard rock it's different you have less amount of time to react and i thought that those mods are cool to have like for example in catch the beat you don't have a free mod bracket and you can use hidden in any of the brackets that is normal that is yeah i don't normal. i don't understand that like that makes sense because Hidden is like a playstyle, so if you're not running hidden, you cannot read. It's uh, see, like Mania in a way. That I you don't can feel use like hidden. it really should be a playstyle, though. I feel like um, you can learn, you can learn hidden, yes, but like learning hidden takes extra time. Not everyone uses hidden to improve their reading. For some people, that messes them up. If one entire team uses hidden because that's their playstyle, but another team doesn't use hidden because because they don't because hidden's not their default playstyle then automatically the team that has hidden's going to is has yeah, a they more have likely a chance advantage. of winning anyways because of the multiplier yeah I, I always feel weird about it I understand the reasoning behind it but what I don't understand is that you can use it in all the brackets are not no mod. Anyway, that that's probably another topic. 
But if that is possible in Cash V, this is probably possible in Mania as well. Like having specific brackets that only work for Mania. I feel of, like I feel like, like that's normal. just as simple. I feel like that's just as simple as like you know talking to Loctav in the Mania World Cup tournament uh, staff and like explaining that because Loctav's not completely against doing additions to the tournament or making stuff better. Um, I'm pretty sure if the map pool selectors like told him, hey, there's a viable reason to have a hard rocker, a hidden or double time pool, like they would, he would take that in consideration and make something of it. Okay. I think that that's a, a good answer. <laughs> okay, there was actually a really good question that I saw posted as well that I'd like to get to real quick because Snowflake actually asked it here. Why are mapping rules so strict? I understand mapping needs ruling, but once it starts destroying creativity, it becomes a problem. I understand where you're coming from, but let me play it to you like this. Um, as someone that's been in the moderation process of beat maps since early 2008, no, 2008, yeah, early 2008, the reason why standard has so many high rules is you have to understand in this day and age where we've gotten to with mapping, we're starting to hit the physical limit of what is actually possible. And while that's okay to do for some, we're starting to see that on every map. And the lower end is getting completely cut out for the higher end. And this is something we don't want to happen. Because if you're a new player and you download this game and the first map you grab has like a seven star difficulty, if you're like most people, you're not going to mess with easy or normal for very long. If you mess with them at all, you're going to want to go and jump straight to the hard stuff. Most people do that. And most people get discouraged and move away from standard in general because the maps are too hard. And now I'm not saying that everybody should nerf down their maps. But, like, these rules that are getting added for difficulty spreads and stuff, and people are saying that hurts creativity. It doesn't hurt creativity as long as you're willing to put in as much work on every point of the map. You can have something that's super insane, super hard to pass, super crazy, as long as you scale it properly to your easiest difficulty. And for those that say scaling is impossible, I feel like, in all honesty, that's just kind of a catch safeguard for I'm lazy. Because I used to use it all the time. It sucks making an entire spread. It's time consuming. People are going to find issues in every single difficulty. And I could see why from a mapping standpoint, you don't want to mess with that. You know, you stay away from it. But, like, if you continue to stay away from that in the long run, it's going to hurt new players to the game. And then those new players that see these hard maps think that's the norm. So they try to take it and raise the bar even further. Everyone's always going to try to raise the bar. So you have to put some kind of safety measures there to keep them from just shooting through the roof. Oh, I misunderstood your question. I think he, he, he was trying to ask about why the rules exist in general, but that is like a normal question to answer. If yeah. Like rules. The rules to... exist in general just so we don't have shit maps everywhere <laughs> yeah well i mean some hard to pa hard to read patterns are totally okay um as, as long know. as it's playable it's yeah the, pro the problem is when people get too extreme with them like the overlaps in shit that we see um in maps like, those are totally okay, and I feel like, yeah, some patterns over the years have gotten bad flack. Like, stuff that used to go over on itself, like in 2008 through 2012, you'll see a lot more maps that have like 1, 2, then 3 under 1, then 4 under 2, then 5 above 1, then 6 under the 5. And those are like, holy crap, you know. And you'll see a lot of those, and back then that was considered okay. But now with the way spacing has become, when you when you start doing crazy patterns like that where movement is really key, it becomes way too easy to get lost. Those those patterns that we saw that used to go back on each other and really were confusing and hard to read, they were always easy to move to. It was the reading that was the difficult part. 
Nowadays, though, um, they don't care about just being able to read it. They want you to be able to move and read it like that at the same time. And combining those two like that makes for maps that don't usually see a very high pass rate. All right, I hopefully that answered your first and your second question there. You can like just use that answer to any mode and it pretty much works. Yeah. It's just with different term terms of what a map is comfortable or not to play. Exactly. And I, I don't just, I'm not trying to discourage people from making the hard stuff either. I know a couple months ago I scared everybody with that difficulty rule spread thing, but like when people actually sat down and let me explain to them what I was trying to achieve, not very many people were totally against the idea anymore. Which is a damn shame that unfortunately the support was so high that it didn't get pushed through. And I understand that some people feel like, oh, thank God it didn't get pushed through. But all I was asking for, and sorry to continue on this, but it, it was kind of uh, important to... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. It was kind of important to me at the time when I was trying to do it. But initially, all I was asking is that you can have a crazy spread. You can name the difficulties, whatever. Just, and people were worried too much about star rating. They were taking star rating into account. All's, all that rule was basically trying to say is no more than seven difficulties and each difficulty scale up from the last. And you were completely fine. But I understand that some people didn't feel that that was possible. Yeah, I mean, I, get, I guess that the way I did it wasn't probably the best, no. But is it something that... Even though nothing good happened from it, it did spark up conversation, which got us a whole lot of new stuff in the modding scene that we didn't have before. And it also got Peppy up off his butt and started working on the new modding panel and the new backbone for how the moderation system and how you'll be able to advance to a BN and rank up from a BN to a bat and possibly a bat to a quack for the future. So. Even though that rule didn't work, it brought a lot of good things with it. Yeah, it definitely did limit it. It did limit it. Um, we were talking about potential um, workarounds for that, like allowing guest difficulties to be the same difficulty as long as it was a guest. Like, you can think it this way, like, if you have seven difficulties, two of them are insane and two extras, you can always have, like, two normals or two hards. It doesn't yeah. really change anything. Yeah, yeah I and think it, it gets a bit extreme when it's like, you have a map that's easy, normal, hard, three insanes, and then, like, three extras on it. Yeah, it becomes too top-heavy there. But that's because... But that's because I know, especially with guest mapping, is a lot of people will guest map a lot of the harder difficulties. Okay. Um. All right, and um, then Baka asked, "Will there be any new mods?" There was a mod I was working on on a test build that I never got finished, but I hope that somebody one day picks it up, and that's Shrink. Um. It's not reverse. We called it shrink. Um, it uses the same algorithm as flashlight, but instead of reducing the area that you see, it reduces the actual hit circles. And they just keep on getting tinier and tinier and tinier. It doesn't affect the approach rate, though. The approach rate's not affected. So the Ouch. circles only shrink. Yeah. And they can get as small, they can get smaller than your cursor. Ouch. Yeah. Well, it depends on what uh, starting size they start out. Like, if you start with four, you're going to end up with, I think it's seven um, by 500 combo. What if it's like one of those marathon maps that has like four, that has like the between like 2,000 to 4,000 notes in it? Um, it, it, it only shrinks up to 500 it combo. It caps at 500. Oh, okay. At 500, it's... 
the smallest it's gonna get. What if it? What if it's? What if it's like a four thousand combo map and there was no cap on it though? Um. Then yeah, they probably it, disappear. Um. No, Kevin. Actually, if you started with CS eight, it would go to ten, even though ten's not available anymore. You are unfortunately not able to set the conditions for what you fail with in sudden death. I'd love for it to be like uh, too many 100s and you just die, but unfortunately it is not like that. I, I think it'd be cool if you could set it like like to not go below like a certain percentage. Yeah, I mean that's something that could probably be adjusted pretty simple. It just, it depends on if we, if there's dev time to devote to that. Okay, um. Alright, we have two questions. We have one from Reginaru and then one from Freeman. So, uh, e either of those going to be voice. Alright, okay, so we both got voice. Um. Um, about the uh, local for the uh, OS, uh, OS game. Uh huh. Why triangles? Why triangles? Because circles was overused. Because it's not going in circles. <laughs> um, I feel like triangles were something that um, came with when Peppy got Flight as a designer. I feel like Flight definitely kind of helped um, shed light on what the design should look like. Um, triangles is just kind of what happened there. Um, I don't know why, in all honesty, but it, it worked out. It looks real good. And um, I feel like that theme's probably not going to go away anytime soon. I was pretty positive it was because so many mappers were using the triangle pattern. No, it's not actually because of the triangle pattern. It's like we tried, we tried to design with circles and it looked ugly. Triangles look a lot cleaner. Yeah, they do. Like, the Great. circles, it just looked more like a bubble effect everywhere. And then when we had the moving triangles, that looked a lot better. I don't know if they're actually going to come back to the main menu like they were there for a while. But it is a possibility later on down the line that the parallax triangles might come back. Alright, thanks. That was simple. Not a problem. Some of these questions are pretty simple. I think next then we have Theorem, and Theorem yeah. wants voice as well, I think. Yep. Oh, z just say it again. I don't believe it. What, Theorem? You, you called me Theorem. I said Theorem. Fee I Theorem. Like, free 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 you said you, no. you, you said You said Theorem. Oh, if I said free room, I'm sorry, but I'm not free room. You added an extra R. <laughs> you did it again. Anyways, my question is... Um... Free room. <laughs> it's a good free one, room I'm sorry. 2016. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, my bad. About Mania, not every player can play every game up. And my question is, would be it be possible to get um, scoreboards for every key mode? Like, 5-key uh, has a different scoreboard than 4-key. I feel like that's another thing that's probably just a matter of time. Um, once people start like demanding something like that more and more, it'll definitely be added. But right now, I just don't see it being high on the to-do list for development-wise. I do there remember talking about this, not specifically about having leaderboards for different key mods, but trying to change a little bit the the ranking system, I think it was. Not mm -hmm. sure if you know, Citrit. In general, like, not really heavily basing your skill in PP, but also in other aspects. Like, for example, if you take Mania, your ability of doing long nodes, of doing SVs, maps, or stuff like that. And I guess you can just change that into standard and use like aim heavy maps, stream heavy maps. 
and pretty much well, that. Yeah, and I, I feel like they we've talked about that, and Pepe definitely doesn't want to move towards that because then it starts to clutter the um like if you have links for each individual thing like aiming and stuff like that, and you get listed. He, his biggest fear is that it just will eat up your user page. You know. Um, but, uh... Let's see. Um, hey. Yeah, can you pass, I think. <laughs> yeah, outside of that, like, I, I mean, it's something that'll definitely happen with the scoreboards. It's just, like, when does it justify putting the development time into it? And that's the main thing I think it is. It's not so much that it's not something to do. And with what Juan said, I know he's not going to do that due to the fact that he doesn't want your entire user page to be eaten up by different types of rankings. So I don't think you'll individually be scored. Like, say, for example, you look at your Mania ranking, I think it'll still be centralized. But um, when in game, being able to like set up the leaderboards for what type of key mode you use, like specifically as a mod, I feel like that's only a matter of time. Cool, cool. All right. Um, an Baka said uh, a question. Oh, okay. So he's gonna unfortunately not be there real quick. Did he have it? Because I was gonna answer that real quick. No, no. He said when he gets back. Yeah, we're probably not going to be there. I do believe we're at the hour mark almost. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, so um, I could take one more question, and then I'm going to go into a little bit about laser before we wrap this up. Oh, you'll understand. It's laser, Juan. Okay, hold on. Where's the question here? Okay, it's the big wall of text. Having intellectual content. Those mappers are vastly different from what makes a map good or fun. You know, probably nice to be my strictness of pros and having sensitivity, for example. You think in the future something will be done about this different opinion? Okay, cool. Well, Snowflake, that was a large mouthful there, but um, I do have a very good answer for this one. Um, as you guys know, there have been recently beatmap nominator tests that uh, our beatmap nominators are taking now to get into the modding scene and be able to approve maps. Now, what this actually does is it gives us the ability to get everyone on the same page. Like you said, there's differing opinions, and we understand that. And we want to move away more from getting our modders to be unranking stuff for like what they feel could be better and more along the lines of we want them to follow like a stricter line, which means a little bit more freedom for our mappers, but yet all the big things that we really don't want to see in maps are definitely being addressed. With keeping um, people on the same page more, it keeps stuff from happening like, oh, oh, this person said I can do it. But this person says I can't. But yeah. I'm going to do it because this person said I could do it. And for all those that passed the test or failed, it didn't matter if you passed or failed, um, Loctav and myself, we have been going through and we go over the test with you and we try to explain things for you and get you in the right state of mind for it. Because something that's happening still is we're seeing a lot of unranks over subjective issues and that's something I want to see dissipate. I do not want to see that continue to happen. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. You shouldn't have to worry about your map getting unranked just because somebody doesn't like the way you set something up. There should be a legit reason and a legit problem with your map that makes it to where you can't have it ranked. Not be something where it's like, oh, well, you know, this jump here just doesn't feel right to me. If there's not a distinct way to point it out as an actual error, then they shouldn't be messing with it. That's another reason why we shifted the quat from actively looking at every single map that comes through to only looking for maps that the community complain about. 
So if you guys feel that there's a problem with the map, you tell us, then we will look over it and we'll find out if, yes, it is a problem without a shadow of a doubt or no. Which means now our QAT don't have to just come in to unrank something. They can just come in and approve it too. They can stop the fighting between the mapper and the modders or the players that are getting mad and they become more of an actual moderation role. But um, uh, hopefully that got that for you. Um, one last question. It's about the editor. Um, what are we at? We're at we're at a bit over forty five minutes. I think or right at forty five minutes. All right. Yeah, I'll take one more, and then I want to talk about laser real quick. Um, snowflake bud. You can, there is a full screen editor, bud. Yeah, there's been a full screen editor for a couple of years now, bud. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go into, go into your, go into your editor and hit alt enter profit. Or if that's not good for you, you could set your window to borderless and then we'll full screen. Almost positive here. Let me just go ahead and open up something real quick. And I'm in the editor. I've seen you put yours in the full screen editor before. Okay, yeah, alt enter doesn't work. Stop telling them lies. Okay. Well, no, I'm sorry. Oh, you mean full screen editor is the grid is full screen? Oh, hell no. The grid will never be full screen. And the reason for that is OS is actually coded in 4.3 generally. Um. That's never going to change. Um, like the backgrounds and stuff, yes, but you have to have... Yeah, the grid is smaller than the actual play field. That is to prevent it from running across the HP bar or running across... circles from going off the screen. Yeah, it prevents circles from going off the screen. That's why it's like that. If we were to make the grid any bigger, even going out wider, if somebody doesn't play in widescreen, then you'd literally cut circles out that they couldn't hit. You gotta remember, this game was made in 07. What was widescreen back in 07? 4x3. Uh, no, I'm, I'm talking like widescreen was like this new thing. Everybody Hello? playing OS on their CRT monitors. Okay, whew. That was crazy. Did you just almost break your client or something? Um, no, my, um, uh... My NVIDIA graphics card dri drivers just died. And then OS died. That's what you get for hitting Alt-Enter. I guess so. But, um, uh... Anyways, yeah, that should have answered your question there. Now, real quick before we wrap this up, and Juan, feel free to talk about this as you don't, uh, if you want, um, because this one's not going to be a question. This is just kind of a little update for people. As you guys may know, the laser branch of OS Next has been currently worked on, and it's going to be being pushed out here very, very soon. Like, we're talking weeks. Um... And what laser is, for those that might not have any information, it is, that is OS Next. It is almost in a point where you're going to be able to mess with it. It's not going to be completely stable, but you will be able to switch to laser branch here soon. I'm currently, as of right now, you do not need to be a supporter to open the laser branch. I do not know if that's going to be changed in the future or not. But what Laser is going to bring is that's actually going to be the OS Next client. You'll see the visual update. You'll see some of the menu transition updates. Now, it will be Bug City. Um, as it's not 100% finished yet. And But we're tired of making people wait. And we feel like if we put it out now, we'll be able to get a lot more feedback as to what things need to be fixed. So that is something that's going to be happening a whole lot sooner than later. 
Snowflake. Us Next is, in all intents and purposes, a complete rework of the entire game. The visuals, the everything. Also, I can say hype. <laughs> oh yeah, hype is serious. And for those spin lovers out there, there's no longer a speed cap. Spin to your heart's content. Four seven seven is no longer your maximum. All right, all right. Time to uh, hook up a hook up a drill to the tablet pen again. Yeah. And See how fast you you can go now. Yeah, it's not actually. Once you get really good with a tablet, it's not hard to hit five. It's not hard to hit four seven seven. And I hit. I think my max spin on the new build is five fifty six. Is the highest I've gotten. But it, it just it, it depends. Um. And for those Catch the Beat guys, we do actually have the animation for Yuzu finished and I've gotten a chance to test it and play with it and it looks really great. But unfortunately our artist that helped with that disappeared. So either I'm going to have to figure out a way to Photoshop in Kai Time animated eyeballs for Yuzu or we'll figure something out. But until his Kai Time variant gets done, we're not going to be able to add that. And with that being said, um, I do believe we're going to go ahead and close up this O's talk. Thanks everyone for coming out today. A little bit on the quieter side. We didn't have Deadbeat with us, um, but me and Winter did all right. Um, we should be doing another one next week. I'm not sure what the topic is yet, but remember everyone, rhythm is only a click away, and we'll see you all very soon. Thanks so much for coming out. Bye-bye. Dragon Ball Seek? Or maybe not. <laughs>